Hey everybody, I'm Maria of the Quilted Poodle. Have you ever tried to stitch out a design that was larger than your safe area? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that today with Virtual Long Arm. We begin by opening Quilt CAD. I'm in simulation mode, so I'm doing this all from my computer. So the first screen we come to is the beginning screen, and it shows you a grid of what your quilt can look like when you design it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to size. I'm going to change this to four blocks across and five blocks down, which makes my quilt size 40 by 32. Block size doesn't matter. I'm going to say OK. Now what I want to do is merge all of the blocks. So I'll hold my left mouse button down and select all of the blocks and then merge. So now you can see I have just one large block. So I want to select my pattern. I'm going to select this cat, double click to open. And it places your design in the box where it's available to you to place inside of your quilt. And there's my cat. So I'm going to place my pattern. And it doesn't quite fill up my entire space, and I want to be sure that my design is larger than my safe area. So I'm going to move it by number of steps. I have opened my lock because I want to move the size of my cat independently, horizontally, and vertically. So first I'm going to make it tall, just about as tall as my entire quilt. Now I'm going to make it wide. Okay, that looks really good. So now that I have my cat design into my quilt, what I can do at this point is save it. So I'll go to the floppy disk drive, and it opens an area for me to save under C, Powered by Quilt CAD Quilts. So I'll give this a name. Let's call it Virtual Long Arm Cat. And then I'll save. And I'm going to save over a previous existence of Virtual Long Arm Cat. He's very popular. So now that I have my pattern and it just about fills my space, I'm going to sew in zones. When I say sew in zones, an icon opens up that tells me virtual long arm is going to split my pattern because it's larger than my safe area. My pattern measures 37 and a half by 15.2. Do I want to continue? Why, yes, I do. I could save my zone sewing session, but I'm not. So the first thing you see now is the quilting interface, and you see the first part of my cat. This is the part that could actually be sewn in the first zone. So just like any other um, quilt design that you're sewing by zones, you first have to place your pattern. I'm going to use a center point placement. I will select this area right here to begin my pattern placement and select the green box with the yellow dot to place my pattern. I am highly recommended to mark my quilt at this point. I'll say OK. And now my pattern has been placed. So I'm going to stitch that out. There doesn't seem to be anything odd about this pattern. It's one continuous line pattern for the cat. So I will stitch that. Starts at the green point and ends at the red point. Okay, I've completed sewing my first zone. So just like with any other pantograph, you are going to say finish zone. You have to break thread. You get the boxes that ask you, have you completed your sewing? Yes. Now I'm going to mark the quilt for my next zone. I'm going to use a single stitch. It now indicates done and continue. I will click the green um, box, and if I were at my quilt, I would have placed um, a sticker, a circle sticker there, or marked it with a, a marker that indicates to me 
where my next zone should start. I'll say continue. It's asked me, am I sure I've placed um, that I've marked my zone? Yes. And so the machine is going to move to where the fabric marker for the next zone should be positioned. I'll say OK. The red dotted lines means this is the way your machine is traveling. I can now move my fabric. I'll say I've done that. Ask me again, are you sure you've moved your fabric? Yes. All right, so it shows you a picture of the next section or the next zone that's going to be stitched out. And as I'm looking at it before I place it, I notice that there is a break here. I think I can eliminate that. So I'm going to go into optimize before I place my pattern. The other thing I want to do is go to the zone manager. And I'm doing this before I've placed my pattern. Some of the things that I want to look for now is where is my pattern going to be broken up because it is so large. This is my first zone, my second zone, and my third. And I wanted to be sure that where my pattern was going to be broken up right here is going to leave me with the least number of areas that I have to match. Okay? So that's why I went there. And also, I want to check to be sure endpoint adjust is selected. So it's the software knows that you have a pattern that's larger than your safe zone. And so it will direct you how to make sure that the beginning and ending marks from your second zone match with your first zone. So I'll say OK. Uh, no. So I want to get rid of this extra um, start stop here. I'll go to optimize. I want my first segment to be number one. That's one. I'll touch the six and it will become one. So that's my first segment. I would like this to be segment two. Okay, and so your numbers shift. So segment one, and I want this to be segment two. So I'll go down one number. That's segment two. I want this to be three. I want this to be four. And this to be five. That way I get rid of that long jump stitch that's across there. I'll say OK. Now I'm going to place my pattern. I'm using a center point placement. As I have moved my fabric, I move it so that the needle is above where I marked for the next zone. OK. I'll place my pattern. And it has placed it for me. When I hit sew, I will be prompted to use endpoint adjust to be sure that my second zone matches with my first zone in terms of matching up those stitches. So when I hit sew, I then go into endpoint adjust. And so what it allows me to do, I've placed my pattern according to the way I've marked it, which should be correct. And this point here for number one should match up with the previous point from the other zone, from the previous zone. If these points are not matching up, and if I'm on my machine, I'm looking at my needle and looking to see whether or not it's landing on that last stitch from the upper zone, from the previous zone. If it is not, I can make some adjustments with this point. Now, what we have down here are our abilities to adjust the point, and I can move it in large steps, medium or small, and I'm selecting point number one, or I could scroll through uh, the other points. Also, if I needed to see that a little bit better, I could use the magnifier. But let's just say I have to make a small adjustment to the right. So here's my arrow going to the right. So I'll click once. And if you can notice, there is, here, let's magnify this. For my point number one, you can now see that I've moved it slightly to the right and that that motion, that movement is marked by a blue line. And then my yellow circle has moved slightly to the right. And now when I'm looking at number 10, this also has to match up with the previous zone. 
So that last stitch on the previous zone needs to match here. If number 10 is not going to land on that last stitch, then I can make some adjustments. All right, so I'm fine with that. So I can say, OK. And it's asking me to select the sewing start point. Well, I want to start with number one. So I'll click there. Now we are in the quilting interface screen. And green is where my stitching will start. And it should line up with the previous zone. And red is where my stitching will end. So I'm going to hit sew. And it will begin stitching. Now when I get to the bottom here, you can see there's a turquoise line, which indicates a jump stitch. So I don't want to stitch across, I just want to jump. So my machine is going to move from here to here. So I'm going to say move to next. And I'll go back later and trim those threads. And now I want to sew again. We'll sew the next section. And again, I need a jump stitch from here to here. So it's just going to pull my thread over. There will be no stitching. So I'm going to move to the next. And press sew. So is the next se segment. Move to next. Sew. Move to next and stitch the final segment. I finish my zone and with any other zone stitching, break thread. You will be prompted to be sure that you've done all the things you need to do to move forward. Yes. I need to mark now where my next zone should be placed. I'm going to mark it with a single stitch. So when I click on single stitch, I will have placed my um, sticky circle marker here. And it will put a single needle point through it with a single stitch. I've done that, so now I can continue. Yes, I'm sure. The machine is going to move to the area where, after I advance my fabric, that's where my needle should appear above that mark. So now I can move my fabric. I'll say OK. Yep. All right. Now I have my pattern here again. It has defaulted to the upper left, which means it has not been placed. And so if I like the way it's going to stitch out, and we can always go to optimize. And the segments are one, two, three, and four. So I like the way that's going to stitch out, so I'm going to say OK. I'm going to place my pattern. Here's where I want to move my pattern to. I'm going to use center point placement. Press the green box with the yellow dot, and it has moved my pattern over. And when I hit sew, I will be prompted again with endpoint adjust. And again, that's to make sure that when these stitches start up on the third zone, that they meet up exactly with the ending stitches on the second zone. So if I need to make any adjustments with the first point, I can adjust it small, medium, and large in any direction. If I need to see more clearly, I can use the magnifier. But let's say number one is fine. So I'm liking everything. It looks good. I'm going to say OK. What point do I want to start with? I am going to start with point number one. And depending on how your stitching is arranged, you may be starting with a different number rather than one. So just click that number where stitching is going to start. In my case, it's going to be number one. All right, there's my pattern, and I'm going to select sew. Stitching starts at the green dot and ends at the red dot. Move to next point. It's going back into endpoint adjust, and let's see. It's finished this first segment, and now it's asking me if I need to have any of any of this next segment corrected, which would be between three and four. I'm going to say it's fine. 
So I want to select my starting point at 3. I'll press so. Stitch the segment between 3 and 4. When I say move to next, it's going back into endpoint adjust. So I can make sure that this point will meet up with my next point. Looks good. I'm going to say OK. I want to begin with number 5, which is right here. I'll say so. Move to next and last time into endpoint adjust to adjust for the last segment, which would be uh, between 7 and 8. And make any adjustments here if you need to and say OK. I am going to begin with point number 7. And press so. All right, you finished. That's how easy it is to use virtual long arm along with endpoint adjust. And granted, this was a very simple pattern, but it allows you to be sure that you've gotten all of your segments from each zone um, marked or correctly placed so that your pattern will stitch out and look very cohesive and will look very much continuous. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe so you won't miss any of my other videos that should be coming out soon. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.